Now in this next section, we're gonna start learning the layers of the epidermis. Now, the epidermis is the uh, top layer of the skin that protects the deep tissues. It's mostly waterproof. Uh, it is made up of cells that are produced by the basal layer, and then each of those gets pushed up as new cells are created by mitosis. And then as the cells get pushed up, they produce this protein called keratin, they fill up with that protein and then they die so that the cells on the most superficial layer are actually dead skin cells. We're going to start at the bottom. So now just to orient you, this is our whole integumentary system. This is the epidermis here and it ends in this wavy layer here. We are, this is a, a diagram just focusing on the layers of the epidermis. So what we're going to start with are just these epidermal layers. We're going to learn all these different layers of the epidermis, and then we'll talk about the dermis and the subcutaneous layer. So we're going to start here at the bottom with the stratum basale. Basale means basal, means bottom. So stratum basale literally means the bottom layer. And it is this layer here, between the last layer of the epidermis, um, between the epidermis and the dermis. Uh, in addition to these basal layer, these basal cells, um, these basal cells are keratinocytes, keratinocyte stem cells. They are stem cells in that this layer of cells is going to do mitosis and create new cells. They are going to then be pushed up into this next layer and then this cell is going to stay here due to mitosis again create a new cell so that's what's happening here is that we have new cells being pushed up and then as new cells get made the older cells get pushed higher and higher and higher okay and you can see that there's some cells in here that are doing mitosis okay but it's mostly these basal cells that are doing mitosis. This is a layer of simple columnar epithelium. You're forgiven if you think these kind of look like cuboidal cells because they're not really that tall. Don't tell them that. They're probably really sensitive about their height. The melanocytes are located within this stratum basale uh, and melanocytes do just what their name suggests. They produce melanin. So site, remember, means cell, melano means melanin. So these are melanin producing cells. Melanin is a pigment uh, that has kind of a brownish tone to it. There are actually several types of melanin. We're just gonna talk about melanin as one thing, but just FYI, there are several different types. And what melanocytes do is they make melanin and then they actually put it in um, granules or vesicles they, that are Re released from the cell and then travel to other cells. Um, we'll come back and talk about that in a little more detail in just a moment. The other thing that we see in this stratum basale layer are tactile cells that are um, sensory cells that are attached to neurons in the nervous system and send signals through the nervous system. So these are going to sense, for example, pressure and send those signals to the nervous system. All right, now this is focusing in on one of these melanocytes in this stratum basale. And you can see that this melanocyte is full of these little brown dots, and then um, it's doing exocytosis and produce and releasing those little droplets of melanin to the extracellular uh, spaces and then those droplets of melanin are taken up uh, by pinocytosis in the surrounding keratinocytes. What happens is as these, uh, as these keratinocytes are exposed to UV radiation, the more melanin gets made in response to UV radiation. And the other cells take in that melanin and use it to make a protective layer around the nucleus of the cell that literally protects the DNA of the cell 
from UV damage. So you may have heard there's no such thing as a healthy tan. That's absolutely true because a tan is a sign that your skin has gotten enough UV radiation that it needs to protect the DNA of the skin cells from that radiation. Now, this is obviously when your skin is producing more melanin than normal. Some people, of course, have darker skin than other people because their melanocytes uh, act differently and produce more melanin as their regular physiology. That's a genetic trait uh, that has, I really need to be clear about this, absolutely nothing to do with the quality of a person. It's just skin color. And in fact, it's skin color that's controlled by, I think, two genes. Um, and the difference between any two people of different skin colors can actually be much less genetically than the difference between two people of the same skin color. Because skin color is just like a couple of genes, okay? Whiteness is entirely a social construct created by Europeans to make themselves superior to other people. We as white people, those of you who are white, like me, need to recognize that and start being anti-racist. Back to melanin. Here's the other cool thing about melanocytes. Um, people with dark skin, uh, they, may, they have the same number of melanocytes. Their melanocytes just make more melanin. <laughs> How wild is that? Yeah. And if you're like me and your skin doesn't really tan, it just makes freckles. It just means that some of your melanocytes make melanin and others are like, eh, I don't really feel like it. Skin color is actually a combination of several things. First of all, um, hemoglobin in the blood vessels gives everyone's skin kind of a pinkish color. Melanin uh, is, is a, a sort of brownish uh, tone. And like I said, there's several different kinds of melanin. And then there's another group of pigments, uh, carotene, which you get from yellow orange vegetables and which your skin can make. So some people have more of an orange tone to their skin naturally. Some people have less carotene naturally in their skin. And so they're going to have more of a pink tone to their skin. Um, if you've ever bought a lipstick, for example, that made your, that looked really orange or really weirdly pink on your skin and you were like, it didn't look like that way on the, on the, in the store. That's why what it is, is your skin has more carotene giving you a yellower or oranger tinge or less giving you more of a pink tinge. Um, these are the carotene tends to be stored in the subcutaneous fat. Um, and yes, if you eat a lot of yellow orange vegetables, you can actually make your skin orange. Uh, skin markings. Uh, there are several different kinds of skin markings. A nevus is the technical term for a mole or a birthmark. So nevi would be plural. Uh, moles or birthmarks are just harmless localized overgrowth of melanocytes. And most people, they have a, like a mole or a birthmark that often developed uh, in an embryonic development or early childhood, and then it stays the same for the rest of their life. There's no reason to ever worry about a mole like that. Freckles are localized area of excessive melanocyte activity. Um, some freckles are permanent, and that's a genetic trait. Some people freckle temporarily in, exposed, in response to UV lights, and people get a nice even tan, and some people freckle. Um, it just It's what your uh, melanocytes are doing in response to UV. And then a hemangioma, sometimes called a strawberry birthmark, is a discoloration of the skin as a result of a tumor of blood vessels. These are usually birth defects. Um, and what happens is during a fetal development, the blood vessels in a part of the body just overdevelop. So it's literally just an overgrowth. That's what a tumor is, an overgrowth of cells. So you get an overgrowth of blood vessels 
and uh, as a result of that excess blood flow and this red color at the skin. Now one thing uh, that you've all heard of, you've all I'm sure heard of melanoma, which is a form of skin cancer, uh, which is when the melanocytes start doing mitosis out of control. And that's all cancer is, is just mitosis gone out of control without the normal cell control mechanisms. Mel melanoma is the most serious form of cancer. You can also have a melanoma of the basal cells or a me melanoma of the keratinocytes. Um, the most common cause of melanoma is UV damage. So definitely um, cover up if you're out in the skin a lot, avoid getting sunburns, avoid damage to your skin. Things to worry about if you have moles that change shape. That's really the big thing to worry about. If you have a spot um, that is more than a quarter inch across, if it has an irregular border or an asymmetrical shape, if it changes color, that's definitely something you want to get uh, looked at, and if it grows. Any mole that starts changing, definitely get that looked at by a dermatologist. Okay, so all of that relates to the stratum basale, which is the bottom layer, the deepest layer of the epidermis. So it's literally the layer between the rest of the epidermis and the dermis. And then the next layer will start, or in the next section, we'll start looking at the other layers of the epidermis.